Hey there, it's Dr. Peebler again. We're going to talk today about mitochondrial heteroplasmy. I alluded to this in the last video, and I'm going to make good of my promise here. So this is a, uh, a kind of a, a, a complicated term, and it's going to seem pretty obscure, but I want to really teach you about what this means and how it uh, relates to your health going forward. So as we kind of talked about last time in the what is what are mitochondria uh, lecture, we're going to talk about uh, what's inside of the mitochondria uh, at a greater detail. And in this case today, we're going to be talking about the mitochondrial DNA. So most everybody knows that DNA is generally found in the nucleus of the cell, which is this purple circle right here in the middle. However, when we zoom into the mitochondria, we're going to see that the mitochondria has its own DNA. And this is very significant because there are many copies of the DNA and it tends to get damaged. So mitochondrial DNA is a circular DNA that has about 16,500 base pairs and it codes for 37 different genes. And it's important to know that all of these genes that it codes for are essential to normal, normal mitochondrial function. In fact, 13 of the genes provide direct coding to enzymes involved in oxidative phosphorylation or the production of ATP, uh, something that we kind of talked about the last time, the pumping of protons, the ATPase, making a, taking ADP, making it into ATP, using electron transport to do that. So 13 of those genes um, are, are, are in the mitochondrial DNA. And as you can see, if there's any damage to the mitochondrial DNA, that can cause major problems for energy production, which then causes major problems for our cells, tissues, organs, et cetera. So this is just a picture of what the mitochondrial circular DNA looks like. Um, there's several different uh, gene fragments here that then get encoded for RNAs and then later proteins. So, you know, why is, why do we care? You know, why do we even need to be talking about this? Well, because when there's DNA mutations, as I alluded to, it directly affects our body's ability to produce energy um, and have proper mitochondrial function. So, uh, you know, according to this paper, it says the multi-copy nature of mitochondrial DNA uh, easily causes heteroplasmy, which we're going to talk about what exactly that means, but it's going to cause heteroplasmy as a unique aspect of mitochondrial DNA, making mitochondrial diseases more complex and heterogeneous, mitochondrial DNA-associated mitochondrial dysfunction plays the important role in development of multi-systemic primary mitochondrial disease, neurodegeneration, and cancer. And we're going to show later that mitochondrial heteroplasmy is related to pretty much every single secondary disease later on that we, you can develop later in life. So this is just another schematic of the circular mitochondrial DNA, but this time it has all the points where there are known mutations that can cause the primary mitochondrial problems. And we're not going to be talking about those hardly at all, because those are things that happen early on in life, uh, probably before uh, birth, and they are going to be systematic problems that, that the person will have the entire lifespan. What we're going to be talking about are, this, are the somatic or the, th the mutations that we develop during life that then mechanistically lead to downstream processes due to a lack of ATP, lack of energy production, or an over uh, expression of oxidative stress, which we'll talk about in detail, considering the talk we're going to be, you know, the overall general principle will be mitochondrial redox, which I will define later. But the bottom line is it's going to affect redox or it's going to affect uh, our ability to produce ATP, which will then lead to systemic problems. According to this paper, it says mitochondrial heteroplasmy exists as a dynamic dynamically determined co-expression of inherited polymorphisms and somatic mutations. Those are the ones we're going to be talking about mostly in this, in this entire uh, series. In varying ratios within individual mitochondrial DNA genomes with repetitive patterns of tissue specificity, mechanistically carcinogenic cellular processes include profound alterations of normal, normative mitochondrial function, notably dependence on aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis and aberrant production and release of lactate, according to classic theory. This is a paper talking about cancer. 
But what we're going to start to see in several different disease processes is that how mitochondrial heteroplasmy is directly related. So the next video, we're actually going to talk about specific diseases that are related to mitochondrial heteroplasmy and exactly how that happens. But I just wanted to give you guys a, a very brief overview of what mitochondrial heteroplasmy is and how it affects disease processes that we all are worried about getting as we age. And then also give just a background of what, what the mitochondrial DNA uh, looks like, how it, what genes it codes for, and we can see how damage to the mitochondrial DNA can then lead to systemic problems later on due to mitochondrial dysfunction. The, the vast majority of this uh, series is going to be talking about mitochondrial function, and mitochondrial function is, is dependent on those proteins that those genes code for working correctly, getting assembled correctly, et cetera. So I hope that you uh, stay with me here. Uh, a lot of this uh, initial stuff will be background information. It's going to be important to, to lay those building blocks so we can understand later in detail, you know, how we can make a difference in our own health. So please stay with us. You will catch us on the next video going deeper into mitochondrial heteroplasmy with specific diseases. Until then.